What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shah. And welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. What's our topic for today? Today, the topic is wrinkles. Today, we're going to be talking about our top five tips for wrinkles uh, to try to uh, minimize the appearance or eliminate, obliterate your wrinkles. And this is something that both of us are actually important in our skincare routines is just sort of minimizing the appearance of some of the things that you see with aging to have healthier skin. And so we'll talk about some of the things that we're doing and some of the things that you can be doing to minimize the appearance of wrinkles. So here we go. Here we go. I'm going to open it up though and tell you right now, I actually really love some wrinkles. I don't think I've ever looked at a person who had crow's feet and never crossed my mind that that looks bad. I always think it looks good. I just know that's a happy person and I'm like, oh, I need them in my life. That's actually true. So some of the people that I know that are like the happiest people have like the most pronounced crow's feet. Like they're just etched in because you know these people are smiling all the time. And so, and the other thing is that it shows your expression, right? It shows your emotions. Um, it, it's how you interact with people is being able to read other people's emotions. And so I actually think that the, the aging face due to wrinkles actually does add a lot of character to people's faces. Yeah, it does. And that's, that's like the point of this all, you know, like people, you, we all have preferences about ourselves and that's okay. So we're gonna approach this, kind of talk about what to do to minimize them. This is not a war on wrinkles. This is just to help everyone kind of get a sense of what would work for you if there are some wrinkles you want less more than, want less, yeah, want less more than others. Does that work? That works. Yeah, you can keep some wrinkles and get rid of other wrinkles actually. So you can get, so we'll talk about some of the hacks there because I think that's something not a lot of people talk about is being deliberate about your wrinkle elimination. All right, so first tip, it's kind of a no-brainer. We're not gonna harp on it. We're not gonna go crazy about this, but obviously sunscreen is critical. Yeah, sunscreen, it's effective, we're done. Right, and some people tout that 90% of skin aging is caused by the sun. It is one of the biggest factors that causes aging. We know that UV radiation damages collagen bundles. That's why you need a broad spectrum uh, sunscreen, not just looking at the SPF, block that UVA radiation. And so it's really, really important to wear sunscreen every day for anti-aging or anti-wrinkle purposes. There's this whole thing about do you need to reapply sunscreen every day, every hour of the day, every two hours of the day, even if you're inside. Look, if you're trying to mitigate your risk of skin cancers, I think that's actually overzealous. If you are trying to mitigate your aging factors from the sun, I think that's where the reapplying sunscreen is very, very appropriate especially if you're just driving or inside your house or whatever it is. That's a good point because we know that UVB radiation doesn't penetrate window glass and we know that UVB radiation is the, the radiation wavelength that causes the most risk of cancer. And so if you're blocking UVB through, through your window glass, it's actually not gonna play a big role in skin cancer. However, UVA does penetrate window glass when you're in your car, when you're in your house. And so if you're really trying to mitigate aging, sunscreen every single day, and reapplication of sunscreen becomes even more important. All right, I've said my piece. Now I'm gonna get killed by 208 skin doc, but I'm <laughs> we can move on. All right, the next tip, avoid tanning beds. This is something a lot of people don't know. Now, you wanna wear sunscreen, you don't wanna go into a tanning bed, right? No brainer. But what a lot of people don't know is that most of the radiation that comes from tanning bulbs is actually UVA radiation. It's not UVB radiation. UVA radiation causes basically immediate and temporary pigment darkening, whereas UVB radiation causes more permanent pigment darkening, but increases the risk of skin cancer. So what you end up getting is a temporary tan with an increased risk of aging, mostly, right? So UVA radiation is gonna damage those collagen bundles and you're literally pumping yourself with UVA radiation when you go on a tanning bed. So for aging purposes and for skin cancer purposes, um, tanning beds are absolutely horrible for your skin long-term. And you can see this in people that use tanning beds over long periods of time, they definitely look much older. You know, and a lot of people use tanning beds for getting a base tan. And so the idea of getting a base tan is logical in this way. They're like, oh, well your skin cells make pigment and your pigment is your natural sunscreen. Yes, this is true. Getting a base tan is gonna protect you from getting sunburnt the next time you're out. However, the counterside to this is by getting that base tan, especially from a tanning bed, that temporary trade-off, it has long-term consequences. So especially just your collagen bundles, elastic fibers, all of that just getting destroyed, degraded over time from this UVA wavelength and then increased risk of skin cancers, not even that long-term. Like we see skin cancers in 20-year-olds, in 30-year-olds, and 
almost almost every time it's from tanning bed use, I think. Always. I mean, that's how I got my skin cancer. Um, so I, I just think it's super important. Um, avoid tanning beds. Okay, so now that takes out the things you're going to do to protect your skin from getting wrinkles. Let's talk about how to actually eliminate wrinkles and how we do this. So the next tip is just using ingredients that build collagen. Right. So ingredients that build collagen, what is that going to do for your skin? Right. So collagen is an abundant protein that's inside the dermis and it gives our dermis a lot of our volume. And we know with aging, we lose collagen in our dermis. And by increasing collagen production, you'll actually minimize the appearance of wrinkles. Now, this isn't going to get rid of the muscle movements in the face. It's not gonna affect the loss of fat or redistribution of fat that occurs in the face with aging, but it does help to increase the volume in the dermis to really minimize the appearance of your wrinkles. And the number one ingredient for that, it's gotta be retinoids. I haven't said this word on camera, I feel like in a month, I'm having like retinoid withdrawals. I just feel like we have to say it, we got it out. Retinoids are the most consistent, the best studied ingredient that we can have expectations for when we talk about building collagen and anti-aging, as well as acne, of course. Right, and this has biopsy proven, right? We took a plug of skin, we looked at it, we knew what it looked like to build collagen over time. And so retinoids over time, we're gonna build collagen in your dermis. They're also gonna increase the hyaluronic acid uh, that's in your dermis, which also gives your dermis volume. It's the most abundant um, glycosaminoglycan or protein inside the dermis. Um, so by increasing hyaluronic acid, and um, your collagen in your dermis, I mean, retinoids are gonna be extremely effective. Exactly, and it's not the only ingredient that works though. Um, so here we have a lot of, a lot of other players. Uh, we have vitamin C is a, just a classic foundational ingredient. Niacinamide, of course, is gonna fall here as well as everywhere else, it seems. You have the phytoretinols, bakuchiol, greater than rosehip oil in my mind. So in addition to ingredients that build collagen, we can actually cause like micro trauma essentially uh, to the dermis uh, layer of our skin and that can actually build collagen. So one of the ways that we do this is using things like microneedling, little punctures in the skin cause our fibroblasts to produce more collagen and that's gonna also beef up the skin essentially. Um, things like laser, resurfacing lasers are gonna be very effective for this. And something we talked about in our LED video that uh, photo, photo, bio, photo, bio, bio, photo, bio, photo, bio, bio modulation <laughs> that occurs with LED um, also is going to help to stimulate collagen production. So if you're if you're focusing on trying to get, eliminate your wrinkles, one way you can do this is by increasing your collagen production. So we talked about things to protect the skin, to build collagen in the skin, but what about a major cause of a lot of the wrinkles, especially on the face, and that's the muscles. So muscle movement causes dynamic wrinkles to form. So when you lift your eyebrows, when you squint your eyes, what you end up doing is you form lines from those muscle movements. Um, and when you're younger, you can have a lot of facial expression and that doesn't lead to static wrinkles. And so dynamic wrinkles are basically what happens when you move your face. Um, and that's expected when you make facial expressions, it's how people communicate with the world. Um, but then um, over time, if you make the same facial expressions all the time, what ends up happening is like your parents say, it gets stuck like that. <laughs> um, and so you end up getting these static wrinkles um, that develop where you often have movement. So how do we stop um, basically forming dynamic lines, which then lead to static lines? We don't have face gym and these exercises where you move your face more to eliminate wrinkles. Like, the idea that you stretch your skin to remove the wrinkle in the area, as well as move the muscles to form wrinkles in the area, is just completely illogical. I can't believe it's gotten the traction it's gotten, but baffling to me. It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I did the video um, on microcurrent in the past. I mean, you can go back and watch it, but I mean, we know that wrinkles are formed by muscle movement a lot of times in people's faces. <laughs> We even use treatments that we're gonna talk about to get rid of those wrinkles uh, by stopping the muscle movement. Okay, a little foreshadowing here. Why on earth would you do facial exercise to increase muscle movement in the face when we know that's gonna make it worse? And we also know that we don't lose muscle with age um, because they've done MRIs of the face to show that people's muscle volume does not decrease with time in the face. And so you really don't need to be doing facial exercises. Um, you could do facial exercises to maybe make your jaw more prominent, but using it on the forehead or anywhere else, um, even though there was a study that did show that it could make people look more youthful, I think it's illogical um, from a understanding of how these things form as a, as a method of treatment. Right, 100% agree. But then we go to the other side. So the gold standard here for inhibiting muscle movement at this point is of course uh, Botox or botulinum toxin. And the way this works, it inhibits the nerves. So it blocks the nerves from sending the signal to the muscle that says, 
contract. And so by doing that, um, you get varying degrees of muscle paralysis. And I think that's something people don't realize as well. Uh, one is that this is not filler. It's not filling volume. It plumps nothing up. But two, people can have varying degrees. You can get good enough to where you can have people move a little bit so they're more subtle, or you can just freeze a person's face and they have no wrinkles at the moment because they're not moving at all. What does Botox do? The only thing that Botox does, and Dysport and ZMN and Juvo and these other, they're all pretty much very similar. What they do essentially is just paralyze the muscle and stop them from moving, right? By doing that, um, you're not able to have dynamic movement of the face. And over time, by not having dynamic movement of the face, it will minimize the appearance of your static wrinkles, which is why a lot of people say that Botox is preventative. Because if you stop dynamic movement before you develop static lines, that's really where you're not going to develop wrinkles. And so in a way, Botox is preventative, even though it can treat wrinkles if you paralyze the muscle for long enough, just, uh, just because it gives your, your dermis time to respond and sort of build the collagen back up in that area. So the thing is, it really is preventative. Yeah. And that blew my mind. Like the first time I, I, it was long before I was in medicine, probably in college or something. I was like, these 20 year old people are getting Botox. Are you kidding me? It actually is going to work best that way because you're going to prevent the wrinkles from occurring in the first place. So I understand that where that comes from now. And then there was a debate um, whether or not and we can get more. Into, we have to do a dedicated video yeah. on how botulinum toxin works. Does Botox cause atrophy? And it a thousand percent causes atrophy. I saw people trying to argue against this. Your muscle is not moving. And just like anytime someone gets disuse of a muscle, that muscle will eventually atrophy. Sometimes we use that atrophy to our advantage. So people that have uh, prominent jaw lines that want to slim the jawline on their face, we will sometimes paralyze the masseter muscles in order to slim out uh, the volume on people's faces. It, it is definitely 1000%. If you paralyze the muscle for long enough, it will atrophy the muscle. Um, and we can, if you're a skilled cosmetic injector, you can use that to your advantage. That being said, um, Botox is sort of the gold standard or botulinum toxins or, or neuromodulators are the gold standard for minimizing the movement of dynamic lines. And so the things that people don't like about it, one, it's an injection and so needle phobia is real and, you know, it makes sense. And then the other thing is you do have to repeat the treatments. But and so with both of those things in mind, uh, people are looking for not permanent ways to get rid of their meals, but alternatives. And so there is a topical form, a topical ingredient now that's supposed to work similarly. And we'll talk about how it works and does this work at all? And how does it compare to Botox? Now this is topical argyroline, which is available from the ordinary in a 10% formulation. It's also available from other brands. And argyroline, similar to botulinum toxin, inhibits the neurotransmission of the chemical that causes muscle contraction. And so by inhibiting muscle contraction, it should theoretically decrease the appearance of dynamic lines. Uh, this is actually the beauty of, beauty of medical literature because we can look at how this product came into development. One of the problems was, can it be absorbed by the skin? They functionally fixed that. So it can be absorbed through the barriers of the skin. And then let's quantify how well that works. And so they've had, they have made good studies quantifying, does this block wrinkles? Does it help the skin in a myriad of different ways, especially related to collagen growth? And so we know that it does work. And then even better, we kind of have an idea of how it compares to Botox and it is less effective. But it's a little bit of a trade-off. So less effective, um, much less expensive, um, but it does seem to have some benefits. So actually topical argyroline, which has been called uh, quote unquote Botox in a bottle, is a reasonable start for somebody who is trying to minimize the appearance of dynamic lines, which then lead to static lines. Do I think it's a replacement uh, for Botox? No, not yet. There's nothing out there that's gonna replace the power of neuromodulators um, in reducing the movement, uh, but I, I think it's a good start. Yeah, I totally agree. Easy to incorporate into routine. So the other thing to reduce <laughs> the, the, the movement of muscle is this thing called frownies. And I get tagged in this all the time on TikTok. But basically, it's a piece of tape that you put on your face, essentially. And it's supposed to be like hypoallergenic tape that doesn't really irritate the skin. But the idea behind it is that you put these frowny pads all over the face at night. And this actually keeps your face from being able to move. Literally, it's got no actives in it. It literally is essentially tape that um, keeps your face from moving. Gotta be strong tape.
Number one, it has to be strong. I've seen it, I don't know. I don't have a recommendation on this. I mean, is it harmful? Probably not. It could probably cause a lot of occlusion of your skincare products, maybe your pores, but uh, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't feel strongly about frownies. I, I don't feel strongly in theory. I don't know if I love it just because, look, we operate on people. I know the distinction between the muscular layer of the face, um, underneath the sub -Q, underneath the skin. There's a lot of movement because of the sub -Q between the skin and the muscle layer so again even if if i even if i mobilize the face i think the muscle still has a little bit of give under there so i don't know how well it's going to work for people agreed all right so the next tip is what happens if you already have developed static wrinkles right so how do you replace the volume that's been lost or how to fill in these wrinkles once they've formed already so the next tip is dermal fillers right so fillers they this is in the name thankfully here right this is going to fill a space and add volume and this does it in a couple different ways we have hyaluronic acid fillers which we talked about hyaluronic acid a lot but it sucks up water and then it holds onto that water creating volume within your skin to plump it up and hopefully abate some of the the, the discrepancy between uninvolved skin and then the wrinkle and then you have other fillers that actually fill the space and then they cause a reaction for your body to make collagen because of a little bit of irritation immune response to grow collagen to have the same effect right so basically the idea is with fillers is so if you have something that's uh, become wrinkly uh like for example if you had like a raisin right and you were to fill a raisin in with a bunch of water or stuff it with something it would get rid of the wrinkles in that raisin uh, so that's exactly how filler works. It basically replaces or adds volume to something. And so we can use this deliberately in parts of the face. These are things like Juvederm and Resilin, where you inject it into the face and basically help to fill out wrinkles. So you can do this along uh, the nasal labial folds. Um, you can do this um, uh, in these areas. But the problem with that is that um, there's a lot of really delicate vessels around here, specifically within this area. So once you've formed lines in this area, it's very difficult to inject in this area. And you don't want to go to anybody to inject filler because there's a lot of important vessels that run through there. If you inject a vessel, it can lead to negative consequences like blindness, um, even in some cases. And so you definitely want to go to see somebody like a board certified dermatologist to have this procedure done. Um, but essentially, um, filler usually used in the cheeks, um, usually used um, in the lips and used in the, in the nasal labial folds can help replace volume that you've lost and you've already formed wrinkles. The filler not only does it directly fill the space, but like Dr. Shaw was saying, if you put it in the cheeks, it can provide volume to actually lift up. So it's actually pulling traction against some of the wrinkles to minimize or like lessen their appearance. Or um, you can just go big with the lifting process and <laughs> So the other thing that you could do is um, you could use like surgery. So surgery, like a facelift, what essentially does is it removes skin and then kind of pulls it back um, and it tightens the skin and kind of tucks it behind the ears. And so that essentially pulls the skin with it to get rid of those fine lines and wrinkles that have already formed. Um, the other thing is um, that you could also do something called PDO threads or threads in general. And those are essentially like threads that they put, they bury underneath the skin to pull the skin with it. Some people like them, some people don't like them. This is an argument that occurs within the dermatology and plastic surgery community quite frequently. Uh, so I'm not gonna touch on it here. I think that's a longer video, but uh, if you really wanna go big, you know, threads, uh, and then real big, you wanna go um, uh, for something like a facelift. And then if you wanna keep it super simple, one of the things that causes uh, wrinkles and fine lines to look worse is just having drier dehydrated skin. So using something like hyaluronic acid, or glycerin or really just a good moisturizer or emollient daily can definitely minimize the appearance of your fine lines. And so if you just want to keep it simple, use a good moisturizer, use a good sunscreen. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Wait, but now I'm confused. Drink more water or use more moisturizing products? Use more moisturizing products and drink enough water, you know? Okay. So here's, here's why. So I am very much against this, like drink water and your skin will get better movement only because it's like, you have psoriasis, drink more water. You have eczema, drink more water. You have acne, drink more water. That's crap. That is crap. But for skin plumping and, and turgor, it's possible because we actually have historically used skin turgor as a measurement of overall hydration. When turgor means like you pinch the skin, how fast does it rebound back? So that's, that's plausible in the idea of like overall skin plumpiness, lusciousness, lookness. 
But in a lot of other settings, I'm adamantly against the idea that drinking more water is going to cure your skin. Completely agree. Um, but I think drinking a healthy amount of water is what really is what you want to do, right? So it's not like drinking more yes, water if you're important. drinking enough water is the answer. Um, but you don't want to not be drinking enough water. You don't want to be dehydrated because if you are dehydrated, it is going to reflect in your skin. Water balance is tightly regulated by the kidneys. And so when you drink too much water, you're just going to pee more. If you don't drink enough water, you're just going to retain more salt and try to hold more water in your body and pee less. Um, and so ultimately, um, you know, just drinking a healthy amount of water can contribute to overall skin hydration in the sense that you're not going to be dehydrated and have poor skin turgor and poor, you know, recoil of your skin. All right, so that summarizes our, our tips on how to minimize, get rid of, prevent uh, fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, what are we doing personally? Oh yeah, that's a good, so retinoid. I'll just take that, I'm doing that. Retinoid. I have done Botox, or I've had Botox twice ever. I think twice, maybe three times. Part of it was like we we would we practice on each other in residency. Like the, we actually receive samples so we can train. And that was a setting which I've had them. Vitamin C, niacinamide. And then a smattering of things like every now and then I'll pick up a phyto retinol and put it on. Not because I don't think they don't work. It's just I have, you know, I have a simple routine, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're not like pregnant or anything. I'm also not pregnant at the moment. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, um, it's sunscreen, retinoids, vitamin C. I mean, all the things that he mentioned. Um, Botox I've done uh, three times, I think. See, and I think that's interesting. You know, there are a myriad of things you can do for your wrinkles as far as actives and treatments. Just pick what works for you. Obviously, we both prefer a kind of a simple regimen and just whatever works for you, you'll have a list you can pick from. And the last thing that's unfortunate is that the beauty standards between different genders, unfortunately, sometimes dictates what type of work people are willing to have and what types of wrinkles people are willing to accept. And so that's something that we don't have an answer to right now. I wish it wasn't like that. Um, but in you know, for some people, they may feel that they do need that more frozen look or to have no wrinkles at all. And that that is unfortunately something that society has instilled in us. And that I think we can all do better trying to make it so it's not that way. Yeah. I mean, that's why, we, again, we always just individualize this and personalize this to you. You know, you're the one watching this. You're the one looking in the mirror. And so we're just giving you the tools, the knowledge, um, information for you to help make your own decisions and personalize and be deliberate about everything. Absolutely. So thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment and subscribe. Make sure you smash the notification button so you know. And then smush, uh, smush it, smash it and join the discord where we talk about all things skincare. Yeah, it's a, it's a growing community. It's actually been a lot of fun getting to know people in the space and just talking with talking to people with similar interests. So join it, talk, a lot of great people there. We have a lot of skincare enthusiasts in the chat. We have some estheticians, we have dermatologists. I mean, it really is a community that's growing and you can, you can kind of learn from each other and that's what's awesome about this whole thing. So mm -hmm. we'll see you next time. We'll see ya. Let's go. First of all, Zevia, I like it. I wouldn't mind. Not good at all. <laughs> Very bad, actually. I wouldn't mind some more. A hashtag at Zevia. Terrible. <laughs> Awful. Do not recommend. <laughs> Highly unrecommended. That's okay. Hold on. Let's just try something really quick. So, okay, here's my problem with this. And like,